so I wanted to make the next series of slideshow of classic Buddhist amulets this time some of the various pim of the great Luang Popan of Wat Bang Nam Ko where I was honored to spend some of the first few weeks of my serious practice staying in temples in Thailand and uh, it's one of the most famous internationally famous amulets of all time known as the 246 OBE edition but actually Lumpo Pan made amulets throughout his life of course and with his later editions after 246 OBE his first prime apprentice Luxit Ek uh, Lumpo Rusi Lingdam helped to make and empower with him and Lumpo Rusi Lingdam's first editions were also assisted with empowerment and making by Lumpo Pan that's what I call a crossover period and so um, an amulet, a Lumpopan Wat Bang Nam Ko amulet that is from the late era close to the passing away of Lumpopan and the early era of Lumporu Sealing Dam might just be able to say who's it from you could say it's from Lumporu Sealing Dam and Lumpopan helped him or you could say it's from Lumpopan and Ru Lingam helped him. So a lot of people have misconceptions about that. And many temples have uh, lineage masters which continue the Wicca, the magical line, uh, teachings and practices of making amulets and empowerments, such as the Bao Yang Grop Pet, the blowing of the Yang Grop Pet into the forehead bone through Kata meditative empowerment and is passed on from master to master such as what Grang Bang Kiao which had Lung Pupun almost 200 years ago and then on to uh, Lung Pu Perm and there were also Luke Wat who never became abbots but were monks making also Bia Ge, the famous Bia Ge Wat Grang Bang Kiao made by Lung Pu Pun, Lung Pu Perm and Lung Pu Jira who came after and now Lumpo Kong Sanya who isn't the abbot, he's a Luke Wat but he's the one who's famous for Biakai and there was also another Ajahn at the same time as Lumpu Perm who became abbot who did, and the other Ajahn did not become abbot but also learned with Lumpu Pun and made Biakai according to the Wicca of Lumpu Pun and uh, was making them at the same time as Lumpu Perm and are also available but uh, much lesser known on the international uh, scene anyway back to Lumpopan this amulet which we are looking at and admiring and I'm going to reduce it a bit now I think just to get a clearer look at it because it's a bit too expanded this is a Pra Lumpopan Pimkrut Boran and it's a Pimleka it's a small amulet and it's a Pim Krut, so Song Krut, Buddha riding Garuda. But as you can see, it's not the classic appearance you may have seen with Lumpopan amulets, because it's a very early era amulet, which can also be seen by this fossilized effect and uh, rubbly um, broken edges. He always liked to use angled edges, which in early era will be smoothed with the hand and not equal and with later eras where block presses were made will be more straight and Lumpo receiving dams will be straight over here so we'll look at the rear face now and bring it up and you can see the chunk of fossilized Muonsan in the middle you can see the lines of where it has been laid upon a surface the markings on the back of an amulet uh, depend on the surface they are laid on when the wet clay is laid out to dry in the sun which is why with Prats Omdit amulets you will see lined effects, scratchy effects, smooth effects if it was laid on marble, if it was laid on a blackboard or, or, or a piece of board, wooden board or if it was laid on a piece of rough stone or if it was laid on something that caused it to make kind of like ridges along the back 
horizontally, like from lines to lines to lines, which I'll show you in some depth again another day. So we'll now just go from Buddha riding animals to have a quick look. Most people know the pink, pinkish and brownish uh, Lugom Pong Yan Grok Pet Diamond Armor Powders Lugom. This is the Lugom Pong Putakun of Lumpopan, the other one he made, one of the various ones he made. And so to take a look at them once on, we can see some little red flecks. Uh, and you can see the slight ridged, I call them maggot lines, almost the maggot line effect, not quite. Um, maybe you would say that they were... Sorry about the noise, it was a hard drive falling down. Uh, one would say that um, perhaps like a planet, you know, like the ridges on a planet, this could be... Uh, some kind of planet, you know, you can see the, the features of the, um, what I would say, um, irregular surface features, it's not smooth, it has cracks, it has little bumps in it, you can see the very white powders in it, you don't see much white powder mildew coming to the surface, which would mean it doesn't have like seashell mixed with coarser powders, it's made from powders of the same kind of coarseness or fineness, quite fine. And the only coarse bits is what has caused the effect on the surface. You can't see, identify many particles. You can see small pinker particles, which are probably rose petals from uh, flowers offered to uh, the Buddha by monks. And Ponglop which is the antra powders. So that was the Lugon Pong Putakun, which is maybe not so visually spectacular as the pink versions, or the really old like Pong Pai Guman looking mildewy, browny beige versions. But actually just like the Lugom of Lumpudu, which is also white, distinguishable by very fine white crystalline powders and the Tukrut inserted in most versions, um, but also like that uh, Pong, Yan, uh, Pong Lop Yantra powders, the 108 Yantra drawn for Pong Batamang, the first of the five powders, and use that chalk to make another um, chalk stick and draw another 108 Yantra, which makes the um, Pong Putakun and then do it again, 108 Yantra designs and the residue powders, you make another chalk stick and do another 108 to make uh, Pong Trini Singhe and then uh, you make another 108 Yantra with a stick made from those chalks residues to make um, Pong Itije or Itaje depending on who says it to your preference, I say ETJ, if any more correct, and uh, earlier, all earlier records use that pronunciation, so I prefer to stick with the old pronunciation. And um, how some did to pronounce it, to pronounced it. And the fifth powder would be, of course, Pong Maharat made with 108 Yantra drawn from the chalk stick made with Pong Trini Singhe. Yeah. And so um, Pong Putakun is made with a chalk stick that has been molded from Pong Batamang. And Pong Trini Singhe is made from a chalk stick that has been made from Pong Putakun. And Pong ITJ is made from a chalk stick that is made from Pong Trini Singhe. And uh, Pong Mahar, uh, 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 Pong ITJ, yeah, um, Pong Maharat is made from a chalk stick made from Pong ITJ. So that takes 
about a decade to make those powders, to be honest, as a solo monk, like some Neto did. So let's go now to a classic pimp. Pim, pim. It's written pimp with a P on the end and a little squiggle above the last P in Thai, the Thai P, which means silence it. So you say pim. This pim, which means model, or this uh, particular, particular design, is the Praputta Jau Pratapsat, the official name, uh, which means the Buddha. Pratap is a, <coughs> a sacred name, only usable with sacred things, for seated upon. Nang means to sit on for a person, but if it's a Buddha, he Pratap means like uh, oh, seated upon the throne. Uh, Patap sat, sat, seated above animals. Yeah. Some people call it Prat Lung Popan, Wat Bang Nom Ko, that's what everybody knows it as. I would like to just indicate this area. This piece here is the letter A. Yeah, it looks like two R's with a line between them. Yeah. And this piece here is the tail of the letter O. Whoops. The letter O. I don't know why it's doing that. And we can see this tail here. Touches the letter A, which in this particular pim, not all, will be evident. We can now see, take notice of the tail area, and if we see, whoops, if we see here, you can see that two of the five this is a uh, Pim Song Gai riding a rooster. Hang uh, Ha Sen. Five lined tail, five feathered tail. You can see these two of the five feathers joined together. There's another version where it's much thinner, but they also join together. So this is, there is more than one Pim. And here is the thing. Lumpopan is famous for 5-6 pim of the Praputajau Patapsat amulet. However, there were well over 80, at least 80 plus pim known to have been made. And I have got this from old people, I've got this from the internet, from books, and don't forget, I sat nearly midnight in the Guti hut of the abbot of Wat Bang Nom Kho, with him learning to meditate, and I spent weeks living there as a Lugwat and sleeping in the Guti with the monks and praying in the mornings and the evenings in the Uposod, in the Uposada, and sitting in the amulet area talking with those guys and learning how to do the Wicha Yan Pet for which Lumpopan was so famous. And I spent a night in the cemetery with a Tudong Glod under the umbrella with the mosquito net in the cemetery of Wat Bang Lumpo, Lumpopan alone. And um, I didn't learn everything I know now about the Lumpopan amulets and I'm still learning. You never stop learning. With over 80 models, you never end it. So I know the ones I know, and I'm learning the ones I'm still learning to know. This is one that I know. You can see it's very dry. It's near Jad. You can see the holes, the pinholes, which I call Roy uh, Kempo, uh, uh, markings of the needles of a crab, which the crab has needle-like feet. So it looks like a crab's been walking across it. It's one of the, Thai, the ways in Thailand that we refer to effects, the surface textures of amulets. And we would say nua jat, jan, which means it's very dry and powdery. It's not oily and kind of fossilized. 
which makes it look newer to an untrained eye. But it just, you know, you mix different amount of oils in the moonsan, and every time the pot is empty, you make a new batch of moonsan and keep pressing, and so you get different effects. And with baked clay amulets or dried powder amulets, depending on the sun or the heat of the sun or the heat of the oven, if the oven cooled down, half of this might be green and the other half red, which you see in many prakro that were baked clay. That's because when the oven is cooling down, the color of the clay changes. And here's the rear face. So you can see once again, this pinkish crab, which you will also see on the famous Lumbusuk slash Lumpopan, Lumpopan amulets of the Prat group, Prat Somdet Rasami group Kronkom, which also had a Pitta, it was found in the Wat, Wat Kronkom, uh, Chedi Supa, which were blessed and made in, in 2460 by Lumpopan, Wat Pang Numko, and Lumbusuk, and Wat Pak Krong Makam Tao. And you can also see this pinkish um, mildew arise, although they were placed in and made in different places. But you, this is shows evidence that the moon sun ha contains the same thing that causes this pink mildew, regardless of having been placed in different group, which also indicates having been made from the same masters which shows that Lumpopan's Moonsan went in the Prakgrok Kronkom as well as his classic Wat Bang Lumko amulets, yeah? So we now go on to the Prat Lumpopan Songai Ha Sen Again, we can see the tail of the Uk connecting with the top of the A and this is very clear as you can see, the edges are rounded. Why is it doing that? The edges are rounded, but a little bit squarer than the earlier version I showed you. And you can see that here, whoa, that here, um, almost three are connected yeah so it's a different pim and you can see that the claws here are closer to the bottom yeah but also the the oh. whoa i don't know why it's doing that i don't know why it's doing that. the o oh. the tail of the o oh meets with the a some of these the ma and the a or the o and the o are backwards in this case to the right way around but there are also reverse versions of the same pim and you see this doesn't have a lotus dace yeah some will have triple single dace some will have a single lotus dace with a line under it. Some will have just a single lotus dace. Some will have a twin lotus dace. Of the riding the cockerel, of riding the bird, of riding the Hanuman. And there are 80 plus models. So this is to destroy the fallacy that the old school Sien Pra of the Pantip and the uh, Tapajan and all of those places who are highly respect for having um, curated what they knew till then but in the age of the internet the knowledge has increased <coughs> and with 20 nearly I don't know 20 or 25 years of study and the last 7 to 10 years of up to 18 hours all day my whole day is just studying amulet books thousands of amulets in my house, authentics, authenticated to learn from and compare and publish and write and read has just exploded the knowledge and I'd like to share it with you. Excuse me. This is the evening. I've 
finish my normal work and I'm making this for you. Because I do intend to start introducing Pat Lung Popan as well and um, I don't want too many doubts and questions because um, it's time consuming. So I'd rather consume the time making this tutorial to upload to YouTube and Facebook for your pleasure and enjoyment and uh, increased learning. Look at the fingerprint on the back of this one. It's not a very clear picture, but it's clear enough for us to see. Can you see how fossilized the deep fingerprint lines are? How, how hardened stone this is, yeah? And the scratches on the back, you can see this has been placed on a wooden board or, or maybe a piece of stone that was scratched in different directions. Um, the irregularity of the outside you look at the edges, the corners of it, all four edges of the amulet. They are angled, but they are not so straight. So I would say somewhere between the other two where I mentioned the angles. One of them had quite straight angles, the other one had very smooth angles. This where is somewhere between, and so I would date it at somewhere between. Yeah. Uh, from the Muan San, I would say it's older rather than younger. Looking at these fingerprints, actually, probably early era. Probably early era. So here we have another one, which is near Dad. It's Heng. It's um, quite dry. We can see mildew arising. So this has the presence of Pong Putakun or has been placed in gro, meaning it has been buried. Because when you make 84,000 Pratsomdet amulets, according to the 84,000 sutras of the Tripitaka, for example, and I think they probably made 84,000 of these, which is why they made 80 pim. Oh, and by the way, the Pratsomdet, which is supposed to have 10 pim, 10 models. Actually, I have seen royal decree uh, documentation that says 173 different models were made yeah? Pratsom did and there were 80 plus models made of the Wat Bang Nom Ko amulets because you make 84,000 amulets if you make them all the same model there's going to be too many and they're not going to be rare and you know they wouldn't be as rare as they were today so this is a uh, Pim Ki Gai Sam Sen, three feathered tail cockerel riding Buddha with a uh, Tan Bua Met Ning Shan with a one tiered lotus dace and it's Bua Met, Bua Met means not the teardrop shaped lotus petals which also can be found rather like bead shaped lotus petals you can see they're round like little footballs like little beads so there's another pin you look at the edges very nice and rounded you look at the uh, Roy Pu Kim at Roy Kim Pu uh, the, the, as if the, the little dots and holes in it like a crab's been sticking his pincers in there as he walked along. You can see the tail of the U. Oh, it's going to change to the back face again now, I know it. The tail of the U oh, touching with the A. Ah. On the left side, you can't really see it, but it does touch. You should always take notice of the head as well of each pin with the ears and the roundness and the top knot. And the top knot. Yeah, the hands, the legs, if it's straight here, if there's a pattern, if there's a V going in there, some of them have a V coming up this way, uh, uh, up through the middle of the legs, through the hands, the roundness of the knees on this one, the, well, the neck of the cockerel, the head of the cockerel, where the beak is, uh, the claws of the cockerel, whether they touch the edge or not, the tail here, the angles, yeah, 
But each one is also different, yeah, because hand pressed. Here, the top piece, the angles between each piece, yeah, the shapes of these of the of the of the lotus beads, yeah, and the thickness of one arm against the other, yeah, and so on. You can see, and in the top of the amulet, you can see the pong. We see it the white special powders filled inside the amulet yeah and here is the back face whoops here is the back face sorry and you can see the powders uh, spilling over into the other side And uh, you can see a very irregular face here where the thumb on the bottom has left an imprint. You can see it's not as fossilized as the one I mentioned earlier. Yeah. And so um, less old. Uh, or kept under different circumstances and different um, environmental conditions or worn less, worn more, been in a drier situation, a moisture situation also affects this. So judging the age, you also have to take those aspects into consideration where two amulets might look younger and older when actually they're the same age but have endured different environmental conditions. But usually I would say this is um, slightly later, slightly later, but still very old. This would be a 2460 about that. This I would, uh, there's a lot of wants and bullied in that, to be quite honest, and Pong Yang Grot Pet. This one I really like a lot. I would call it a Pimboran. You can see that uh, the what do you call that? The neck of the chicken, the 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 the, the comb is more coarse. I find it more graceful. It's not as rounded. Um, the feet, a bit harder to see. They're more raised here. The three samsen and thinner, which is more beautiful. They they fade out more. They're not as long. The tail is a bit straighter and more horizontal. It's also Bua Met Sandiao. It's actually the same pim. It's actually the same pim. But it's not the same block press because this, the left knee to our side, the Buddha's right knee, is actually bigger. Yeah. than the Buddha's right knee on this one which is the same size as on the other side and also there is a difference here there is a difference these two are stuck together but it's the same pin this is also this is also thicker whoops this is also thicker I'm sorry this is also thicker than this side it is on the other model but this one is much thicker this has been used much more this oh, is also different slightly different this is an older pin and the corners are much shorter and more rounded it has pong in the top powders so it's another authentic one and I would then look at this one, the key crude. The key crude. <coughs> and I would indicate at first here, you can see this bold, 
bow shaped dace without a lotus there are lotus ones there are Hanuman with wings here you can see Hanuman more with arms and bent knees the wings are very coarse you can see here a wing you can see here a wing and here two feathers of a wing here is very coarse you can see the depth of the head here you look at the arms here they're much more equal and this one is thicker on this side you have a double line with the hands here yeah you have a line through here and uh, this is only one of many Pim Songkrut Hanuman uh, Song Hanuman uh, sorry Songkrut uh, sorry I kept saying Hanuman getting confused uh, Songkrut Garuda not Hanuman did I say Hanuman well millions of amulets in your head I was probably thinking about the other one so here is the rear face and we can see the particles I'm remaining silent so we can look and I'm going to expand it it's not such a clear picture but it expanded a bit so we can see the particles in the back face you see the little black dots which is often seen in this era of his amulets and this is of course a pimboran meaning boran means ancient is a key main this is a, a, a key main lake small pim is a small model and means riding the porcupine and you can see of course the porcupine is a much more basic model probably from a wooden block press or a shaving stone carved block press made by a local artisan or maybe just handmade by Lumpopan himself and uh, much more simple for me very sacred you can see this kind of fossil oh <laughs> you can see this kind of fossilized protrusion you can see the the how would I say suk 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 means worn down details and over the surface of the porcupine over the where there was a single dace boamet um, round bobbled uh, lotus taste looks like it might have had a line under it the Buddha itself is beautifully shaped has a rounded top knot there is powder in the bottom the U touches the A connects as it does here it connects with the top of the A and uh, beautiful yes beautiful so we look at the rear face now just take him up a little bit and um, you can see white crystalline particles white powder rising you can see bits of mildew arising black particles crevices which is from the with earthen amulets like this it happens a lot less than white sacred powders like the Pat did but as the wetter clay and don't forget a baked amulet isn't really wet anymore but it still has some moisture within in the depths and this causes this kind of fissures to occur and small holes like this as the con as the clay gets drier and drier and contracts and uh, this kind of uh, uneven veined surface which has a texture to it if you ran your finger over it you would see there's higher and lower bits to it 
um, also comes from the contraction and only comes with fossilization and age. And we look at the edges here, very smoothed off. These are almost circular here. Um, and uneven bits like this show that it has not been cut with machine, it's been cut with a knife or with an instrument by hand. So a very early era amulet. I would take notice of these crevices here because it shows extreme aging. And here I would try to get a look inside at the clay because this piece here you can see the inner clay which will have had less exposure to oxygen and less exposure over time and you will be able to see a more fresher look and see the content which isn't easy I know so here we can see a little bit more um, this is the Pimki main Mangonyai so also a porcupine but the big dragon version Mangonyai and as you can see the lotus is more like a curved boat and it has kind of little lines between it. The feet of the Buddha are very tapered. The arms are more curved outwards, more bent outwards. The head is typical, but the ears are much bigger than usual. No oh, visible, only ma and a, yeah, and here is the o, here was a o, but it's caved in, and here we have a tan, I don't know what this tan is called, of this pim, it's not a boa, it's not a lotus, it's like a tagol, but I don't know, I shall find out what that is called, as I said, I'm still learning the 80 plus models, um, this is one of three or four uh, porcupine models we've already looked at. This one you can see facial details. You can see facial details in it. And very, very clear cut lines of the whiskers and the fingers. And the lines along its body which touch with the edge. You can see whiter powders around the edges where the surface has become exposed. Whereas it's pinkish on the outside which once again, and in the middle, you can see the whiter powders. So this amulet was actually a white powder amulet, and this pinkish effect is the mildew which I was talking about, found in the Grukrung Kham, which Lumpopan had a hand in, and in the uh, White Bang Nam Ko amulet. So this is Nur Pong, uh, Nur Kao, but it has the red um, mildew or from the baking process, as I said, which I doubt because then the edges would also, um, if it was cooled down, here would be green on the edges. And if it was too hot, then here would be red, but the edges would not be white, they would be black. So we look at the back, and here we have lovely, lovely fingerprints. Whoops. Uh, you can see the thumbprints and you can see a line here of fissure whoops a line of fissures a line of fissures or holes which just um, contractions and the edges here this just just this this hand sorry this hand um, cut edges molded I mean how, how how much more handmade can you get than this kind of fingerprint and the dryness it's not fossilized so it's not the first era it's 2460 yeah you, you can see maybe we expand little bits of white less bits of black substance the odd bit so this was a different batch of Moonsan, 
because every time you mix a new pot of stew, the ingredients are slightly, slightly different, even though it's the same formula, same recipe. And then, talking about old, early era, here we have the porcupine again. And as you can see, this porcupine is like the other one, which was red and dry. Yeah, was red and dry, and the pim leg. This is a small pim of an early era version. Yeah, very simple porcupine. And also, you look at the details of the porcupine, very simple with a straight uh, aardvark nose. I'd call it the aardvark nose. <laughs> Pim. And this uh, bubbled uh, lotus taste that seems to have separated gaps in it, which we can actually also see here on the Pim leg, on the small version. And we can also see the aardvark nose. Yeah. So that's the Pim leg early era it looks just as old you can see the difference in the clay between that and that yeah here we have a very 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 old this has been lacquered of course as you can see it has lacquer on it you can see this greeny white substance coming out too uh, which you see on uh, in small portions on the wet bang numco amulet I'm not sure, I, it must be some kind of malachite arising from something within there. And here we have a Pimki Nok riding the bird. Which means a dace made of bead-shaped lotus petals with a uh, story below it a story as in two stories three story building with a with a with a dace below it a straight dace and it's the pimki nok riding a bird it's the pimki nok riding a bird this with the claw here in this particular pim is important, but you can't really see the details of the points of the claw and where they should arrive. And the head, the eye and the beak will tell you a lot if you can find a clear version of this block press. But this is very, very, very early. If you look at the powders in the top, you can see extreme age and the o. Oh, the, the lettering and just the surface, you know, and, and the, the, the hole in the chest with the contraction. This is a seriously ancient early era Lumpopan amulet. He made throughout his life, as I said, not just 246 OBE. Yeah, Prat Lumpopan. You look at the fingerprint on the back of this, yeah, it's fossilized, yeah. And you look at the fingerprint on the back of this, it's not fossilized, but it's old and it's so old that it's dry as a desert, yeah? Not yet, yeah? But you look at the back of this one <coughs> and you see how fossilized it is. It's like a 200 year old Pratsum Dip Wadakang, no more, yeah? And uh, you can't fake that kind of aging. And look at the curve on the cut around the edge, the border of the amulet. And uh, just look at the fossilized effect of the fingerprints and how less deep they are because of the wear and tear over the years, which is decades more than the previous version, which I showed you here. Yeah, many, many decades more, many decades more. Yeah. So let's take a look at another one, which is uh, also again a Pimki guy. And we can see here the crest is thicker than the other slimmer, more tapered one I showed you, as is the beak, much thicker, more like a pelican beak. These are the Boa Mechandiao 
the uh, ball shaped lotus taste does not have a line under it it just has the ball shaped lotus taste the three lines of the tail are a bit more tapered but still short but more tapered and longer than a previous one I just showed yeah we can see the white mildew on the surface we can see the edges are smooth but a little bit more angled than the earliest era yeah we can see the gap between in the center on the lotus dace the missing bubble uh, this one has the knee to our left larger than the knee to the right so it belongs to one of the other pimp we if you remember i mentioned where the knee was bigger on one but not on the other and so that is the Pimki guy, Sam Sen Tan Boa Diao. Yeah. Boa Met. And here is the rear face. And here you can see plenty of particles of the white stuff. You can, I uh, will make it bigger. You can see the little black particles, not as many as in the one example I showed, but you can see particles. And the white particles within you can see the holes and the, 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 the textured surface where it is irregular and then you can see where it's become open and oxidized instead of white powder visible you have some kind of grayish color here it's turned gray uh, exposed to the air the inners therefore this white stuff is not the inner stuff Rather, coming up, the Pongputakun, it is not, it is crab growth. So, the Meg 84,000 amulets they distributed in throughout his life and in the official edition where it was mass made in 246 OBE, famous edition, but before that, for decades, he was making them, making them in the forest. And probably not just from these powders, probably made them from other things too. There's still a lot to come to light about Lumputim, Lumpopa, and Somde Pabuda Janto, and other great masters. Lumpuke, Wat Kriyawan. And, you know, that they're all gone, and there's only these five models, and they're worth a million dollars. Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. I see them sell stuff for ten thousand dollars in the magazines here. I'm quite happy to sell one of their ten, fifteen thousand dollar amulets if it's a first prize winner for three thousand. If it's no certificate for a thousand, but authentic. But um, some people are charging ridiculous prices. That is also a fallacy. You can find these things; they're expensive, but they're not that expensive as we have been taught to believe. And just look at that megalith effect and how much older that is than the classic editions we know. And that was Amulet Talk, classic amulet, classic Buddhist amulets, I believe episode 4. So for Amulet Talk, which I will be sharing to the Amulet Talk channel, and uh, the Thailand Amulet, thailandamulet.net YouTube channel. We're in German, meaning sharing it from my own channel because I'm going to upload this, I think, to the Ajahn Spencer channel. No, I'm not. I always upload this to the Thailand Amulets YouTube channel or to the Amulets TV YouTube channel. This is going, I believe, on Thailand Amulets YouTube channel. Yes. You know why? That's the only one that is monetized. So I get a little bit of money if a lot of people watch this. Which would rentabilize my time. Not that I love money, but why not if it's for free? Upload a video. You can upload it for nothing, or you can upload it for free. So, Ajahn Spencer for the Buddha Magic Project, signing off.